So now we're going on to the upholstery stage. Um, this is the seat and deck that we've stitched together. And so here we go. I'm going to drape it over the back like so. And I'm going to make sure I'm even. Now, you can also fold this in half and notch down here and, and actually measure. If we had a stripe that really we really cared about, we don't care about this. It's a very subtle stripe. We can't p really pick up a center point. You can also do that. But I'm doing this by eye. I'm just making sure I have enough fabric on both sides, an equal amount of fabric on both sides. Just kind of let it fall down in place. Okay, the seam, and we're going to show you this in a minute. We're going to show you the seam down here it has to go in between the seat and the deck like so. But on this piece here, to bring this back this way, and we have to actually make cuts in here in the front here. So uh, I'm going to ask, uh, we can see the cuts I think from that from that angle. <coughs> and what we're going to do is I'm going to fold this back. I've got my seam lined up at the bottom here. Which again, I'm going to show you that in a minute. And I, I, I'm going to be straight like so. There's a post over here. The post comes right over here. It's a very thick post. So you want to get, note of the, get a note of that. Just look at it. It's a four inch post. I'm going to kind of line that up with my eyesight on this side. And here's the thing. You don't want to overcut this because the fabric has to go inside the piece. If you see my other videos, we talk about this a lot. So I'm just going to put my finger in here. And see, see that's, a, that's a, my whole finger gets buried in there. So really, you can be, your cut can stop way out here, almost the finger length. Okay, so that's that's a good way of doing it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut. This just takes one cut on each side, just like this, and this is going to be able to go through now. The seat portion, a little bit of the seat portion, and the deck is able to go through. I'm not going to push the whole thing through. We just want enough to come through so that I can pull it tight, so that it makes it easy to stitch down. And I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, I'm going to come on the other side, cut this. So you see what I did here? I, I have this lined up, right? Now the common mistake that people make is they cut all the way to here. And you don't want to do that because your cut's exposed. The idea here, the object is to get the cut as deep inside the piece of furniture as possible without it kinking up, okay? Without the fabric kinking up. So here I go. I'm going to cut this. Look, watch how small of a cut this is. I'm near the seam here. Really, it's just about like that. Pulls down. Okay, I'm going to get my staple gun in a minute. This pulls through. I'm going, to, I'm going to staple where the stitching is on both sides. I'm going to pull it tight. I'm going to grab my gun, my staple gun, my pneumatic staple gun. And then I'm going to just come to the side. I'm going to pull this and staple. I'm going to go to the other side and pull it. I'm going to staple it. What that does is it gets good tension on this seam so that it makes it easy to stitch. That's tension there, staple, or tack. Somebody was asking about, uh, they, don't, they don't do the staple gun, they just use tacks. And they were asking about uh, should they spit tacks. My recommendation is not to spit tacks because I have a video out there spitting tacks. I think it's unnecessary these days to spit tacks. I told him, can space them out on a white piece of paper and pick them up one at a time. He, he doesn't with a magnetic hammer. You don't have to put them in your mouth. I don't recommend it. So um, the reason, I just wanted to go back to the seat now. We're going to have to stitch this. The reason that this is separate, you might be wondering, why didn't he just cover the whole thing? Why did he go bother? Why did he bother, you know, why did he bother putting a stitch in here? This was because on fine furniture, the seat's always higher than the deck so that the cushion sits in at an angle. That's why. So I'm gonna, okay, so we're going to fold this back, like so, seat portion. I'm going to make sure that we only have the seam down here. Not, none of the seat or the deck's going to be in our way. And I'm going to place this right on the in between. If you see this little gap here, this seam goes in between that gap. Okay, then I'm going to take a nice piece. This is the nylon tufting twine, which is highly recommended for this process. We're going to take about double what we need. Okay, double the length. I'm going to cut it off. And I happen to own my only diamond pointed needle. I want to show you that. Look at that, baby. Diamond pointed needle. 
And what that, it just goes in smoother than a, than a round point. I love these needles. I don't think you can get them. So I'm gonna thread that. I'm gonna leave about an, a foot or a foot and a half of thread on one side. I'm a right-handed person, so I'm gonna start from the right to the left. And the object here is you wanna be the, to this side of the seam, not over here, because you could be uh, sewing something you don't wanna sew. So I'm in the, I'm not in the seam, I'm to the front of the seam. Okay, and I'm gonna just get, that didn't go all the way through, so I'm gonna do that again. Well, you gotta make sure that you're through to the decking, to the, to the uh, piece of uh, burlap that's underneath. Okay, I'm going to just put a knot in this. Keep that tight. And this is just a back stitch, so I'm about an inch behind each stitch. Now the length of the needle determines how long this part is. And that's about three inches, I'd say. You don't have to be too close with this if you pulled it tight like we did. I'm going to have to take small stitches here. See? Boy, that, that diamond pointed needle makes a big difference. Just a smoother, smoother. You want to try to be careful not to get your twine in the in the day crime. The other side. Moving right along. how nice this is after we do Almost done. I'm going to get another stitch in here. And what I'm going to do is make sure you, you knot it. Try to get a knot on the end. Let's take a small stitch and just go through the loop, which you've been trying to avoid to do until now. And that locks it. You can cut this. Make sure my diamond pointed needle gets put away. So that pay well done with that for a while. Okay, I'm gonna remove my scissors and my twine. And Patrick's gonna come around. Well, he can stay there. What I'm gonna do is look at how nice this is. Look at this. Are you kidding me? Look at that. How straight and nice that is and tight. So now we're going to do that. We're going to pull the deck through, but we've we've got an obstacles. So we've got three posts, and you might want to look at those before you you look, and then you can feel the post. I can feel a post right here. The post is about two inches thick, and it's right here. It goes all the way down in the frame, and then we have another one post over here. But let's do the the middle post first. It has to be cut around. So I'm using my 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 stripe to actually get a good line up. Use your finger that. That finger I did, put your finger in, and you know, it's a good five inches. So that means up in the surface that we don't want to go more than five inches. And then even we can put a little bit of a T piece or a V shape right there from this angle. And then now we should be able to slide this through very nicely on both sides of that post. Okay. This is a very tight frame, which is good actually. When it's good to have a tight frame like that. Okay, I'm just going to come back over here because now we have to get this post cut, which is, I really have to dig for this post. That post is right here, so I'm going to line up my fabric. Again, don't go, you know, the, the instinct is to go right to here. That would be wrong. You want to be backing up. It has to travel within the frame of the chair. This is the hardest thing for a lot of people, is you have to put, you have to visualize this, that that fabric has to travel through to that post. So therefore, you don't want to be up at the top of the surface. You want to try to get it as deep as possible to cut. So I'm going to go right to there. And then I'm going to do a little V, maybe a little bit more. And now we should have on this side, all of our deck should be able to freely go through to the outsides. I'm really kind of excited about this because I can feel it. 
you know, I'm not even over there pulling it yet, but I know it's going to pull nice. It's a nice fabric, too, to be working. I love this fabric. So we have this other post we have to cut around. I'm going to fill for it. Careful when you do that, by the way. You might have a staple in there, the loose staple. You have to be careful. So that post is right about there. This is where the visualization happens and the prepping of the fabric. This is what I mean by prepping is I'm getting my, my fingers in here. I'm getting this tight. I'm lining it up. A lot of people get nervous about this, but if you, if you know, um, you won't have to be nervous. Okay, so I'm going to be cutting right to about there. And sometimes you can't always use the line of the fabrics. Don't get, sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. So don't get stuck on that one idea where you can use the lines of a fabric in order to line up. This happens to be that I could use it. Okay, I'm about five inches away from the post. I'm going to do this little V cut. And hopefully this is going to go through, transition nicely through. Yeah, that's tight. Wow. That is tight. Another indication of a very fine piece of furniture is this section that's tight. Okay, so let's go to the back and pull this the rest of the way through. Okay, I'm coming over here. Wow. Let's pull that through. There we go. Look how nice that is. Okay, we're gonna go through here. Pull that through. All right. Pull this through. Come up here. You don't have to come this side back again. Just gonna give this a little pull through. And then we're gonna staple this down quickly. We're gonna staple this down because I'm gonna come up here now to first look at this to make sure this is straight and tight. I'm just running my hands along there. I really like the way that came out. Let me get my staple. Okay, so we're just going to staple to the top of that wood rail. I just want to show you that. Top of that wood rail. And I'm just giving a little bit of a pull. This doesn't have to be stretched a lot. I'm just going to finish this up. Now we're going to staple the seats. I'm going to pull it to the, to the bottom first. Now on some fabrics, like this fabric, um, you can be confident enough to go right to stapling, but as you've seen in a lot of other tapes that I do, a lot of other videos, I pin tack first. But if you're confident, you can go right to stapling. Um, and I, I'm confident. I love this fabric, the way it's working out. So I'm going to, I put a staple in the middle. I'm going to stretch it to the, to the side. I'm going to put a staple here. And I'm going to follow the line, you can see a little bit of a line in here. I'm gonna follow that as much as I can. Oh, you know, you can follow your line after you've you've stapled here and then pulled it tight. You can follow this the sideways line. It's very faint. There's another reason why you don't have to pin tack. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. I'm gonna stretch it. And I'm gonna staple. And then from the middle out, I'm gonna to try to get it as straight as I possibly can. Okay, on the, on the ends, this is very important because what has to happen, we are going to put the skirt back on this. Okay, I'm just going to undo this a little bit more. Now, there's a small cut that has to happen in here. It's, this is a wire edge seat, so you have to be careful not to overcut this, but there's too much here, there's too much kinking up, so I do need at least a little cut this way. Watch this, I'm going to lift this up. And I'm going to try to slide it underneath this part now. Our, our, our other cover is going to do the same thing this is doing. So, but I do want a pleat coming off here because that strengthens it, right? Okay, so hold it right there. I got it the way I want it. I'm going to stretch it a little bit more. Stretch it down here. Even though it's going to have a skirt that's going to cover a lot of this, I like to finish it, it like it's not having a skirt. Because if the customer lifts the skirt up, she wants to know that we did a good job underneath the skirt, I think. So this gets this gets a pleat this way, and this gets a pleat this way, right? So let's just finish it up nice. You know, why not? How, lo how much longer does it take to do that? Not much longer. Okay. 
And that's good. Okay, we can even get a staple on this side. We wouldn't do that if it was if it was not having a scruff. We would we would be a little bit more, even more careful on that. Okay, let's do the other side and then we're finished with this process. So now you're gonna see why I kept the upholstery on the inside back um, and then I upholstered this first. Because now that I've, I've done my deck area, I can pull this out now. And I don't have to be careful, this is the old fabric, so, but what I do have to be careful with is preserving the underneath, especially where the buttons go, as, as long as possible. Um, that's what we did here. By keeping the back on while we're doing all of our other work, we preserve the, the tufting, okay? But now we're, this is our next step, is the inside arms and the inside back, so we're ready to take the old fabric off. So I'm going to pull it, it's, it's all loose, so I'm going to pull it this way. I'm just going to use my side cutters maybe to help me pull a little bit. I want to try to be as careful as I can. Okay, but it should be all loose with that. And I've clipped the buttons. So I'm still trying to be as careful as I can when I pull this out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut up the middle, make it even easier. Okay, we're gonna go to the back now. You can even cut a little bit here to fold it back. Fold it back's gonna make us easier to all the buttons are loose, thing comes out. Because this is such beautifully, this was so beautifully done originally and it's pretty new. We're pretty good here. Um, I don't even want to add anything to this. Uh, because I don't want to make it any softer than it is. So we're going to come to the back. And so now if I, I can go digging, okay, I see a little bit of a problem. We're going to fix this. This is a little bit of a stain. That's going to come out, right? I'm going to pick that clean. Okay, I'm going to cut this really close to the staples. Okay. Now I know I'm going to get comments from this. People say, "Oh, he's lazy. He didn't. He didn't go in and, and do undo these staples." But to me, honestly, I think we're going to do more damage to the wood. It's a softer wood too. It's an ash than I I would like. So I think it's it's a flat piece. It's a very light fabric. If it were a heavy fabric, we would have to take it off because um, it's a light fabric. We're not going to we're going to just cut it even. We're going to trim it even. Okay. So we're going to do that all the way around. Now we're going to come to back to the front. And I'm going to prep the front. Okay, I'm going to pull, a, pull this down because some of it came out. Right? So push it in. I'm going to take each hole and push it through all the extra cotton that came off. Right? Need make sure that our access to the back when we put our needle in it's clear. Push this in. Right, well, we're good to go with the upholstery so we'll get moving on that. Mm -hmm.